St. Mark's. Good morning, St. Mark's. Good morning. <laughs> we are happy to be in the house of the Lord. Do you notice something this morning that is different from yesterday morning? Yes, there is. The sun is shining. Yes. Yesterday it was raining all day. God is a good God. He is. And he has given us another opportunity to come into his house to worship him. Amen. He deserves all our praise. Amen. If we should look or think of the goodness of God, yes. what else can we do but to praise, praise him? him. Yes. We ought to praise the Lord. So we thank God for bringing us here. So we will say welcome to everyone who is here today. Welcome to those who are in our virtual space. We say welcome. And we are happy that you have chosen to join St. Mark's in worship today. I pray and hope that the experience will be a blessing to all of us. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. So we are going to begin our worship. I should have said, on behalf of the pastor of this church, welcome to all of you. We are going to begin our worship by singing the hymn, How Great Thou Art. And that is found in the hymnal 77, those at home. Hymnal 77, how great thou art. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, our refuge and our strength, our joy, our peace, we come to you this morning with hearts of thanksgiving, for we know how great you are. We thank you, God, that you have given us another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you, God, for who you are. We bless your name this morning, and we worship you. Lord, we worship you. You deserve all our praise and thanksgiving, for you are God. There is none other like you, Lord, and we want to thank you. God, we thank you for the blessings of the past week. You have been so, so good, no matter what the circumstances. God, you showed up. You showed up in so many ways, and we want to thank you. We thank you, God, for touching our sick bodies. We thank you, Lord, for the pain that is gone. We thank you. We thank you for the food you provided on the table. God, we thank you. We thank you that you are a God on who we can depend. A God who will not turn us away when we call. Lord, we thank you this morning. How oh, we want to praise your name, Lord, for you are worthy indeed. Oh, we thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us here this morning. Lord, you are such a good God. We know you are good. Lord, you do things for us that only you alone, God, need to get the praise. No man, but you and you alone. Thank you for who you are, God. We know you are working, and we want to thank you. God, when we look around and see all that is taking place, Sometimes we ask ourselves, is God with us? Is God seeing us? Is God hearing us? But thanks be to God, you are God and God alone. And no matter what may come our way, if we only put our hands in your hands, God, we know you will get us there. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of all praise and adoration. We thank you and we bless your name. We remember our sick and shut in members of this church. We pray, God, that you will continue to be with them. Some of them are in pain this morning, I know. But God, we know you are a healer and a restorer. We remember those who are still in mourning, God. We ask you to continue to wrap your loving arms around them. May they feel your presence and know that your promise is never to leave them, neither to forsake them. Holy God, be with us today. We pray for our pastor as he brings the word to us, Lord. Help us to open up our hearts to receive something from you, God. A word that will penetrate. A word that will see us through this week, Lord. Holy Spirit, descend on him even now and give him the power to do your work. Your work, Lord, for we are depending on you. Bless his family. Bless each and everyone here this morning. God, you know all our hearts. You know everything about us. We pray, God, that you will continue to lead and to bless and to guide. For these and other mercies we ask in the name of Jesus, Amen. our Lord. Amen. Amen.
scripture readings from Sister Nita and Sister Simon. Good morning, church. Our scripture reading is taken from Exodus chapter 20, reading from verse 1 through 17. Here beginneth the first verse of the 20th chapter of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them to, or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You are son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female slave, ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of God for the people of God. Let's stand for the gospel. Gospel is taken from John 2, verses 13 through 22. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables, making a whip of cords he drove all of them out of the temple with the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years and will raise and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God.
choir. Amen. Oh, amen. Good morning, friends. Good morning, church. Oh, I didn't hear that. Good morning, church. Buenos dias. Bonjour. Shalom. Salam alaikum. Oh, my God. We are all here. Aquaba, that's the language from Ghana. I only know to say that word. And I was told Aquaba means welcome. So welcome again into the house of God. I am so glad to see everyone. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, imagine if you were not here. <laughs> so your seat would be empty. Seat would be empty. And we see so many empty seats, they did not come. You know, some of them are not feeling well, others are traveling, others are on other types of situations that really uh, could not enable them to come. But if you intentionally and deliberately choose not to come, then imagine what happens if you are seat. It's empty. Imagine what happens with the blessings that the Lord has placed on your seat waiting for you. You're not going to get them. You're not going to get them. You know, every time when I come to the church in the middle of the week, uh, I like to make my way here to the sanctuary. I walk around and I pray over your seat. And I pray God to place blessings there for you. And then you come in, you take your seat, you worship. You don't know, but I have asked God to place something nice for you on your seat. So every time you choose not to come, and then you go through stuff in life. Don't blame me. Don't blame God. Uh, you know that you did not come. No sure. No sure. <laughs> Amen. I'm so glad to see all of you. God is really good and God is doing something in our lives. Look at your neighbor this time and say, God is doing something. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when we are stranded in situations, it's hard to even think that way. We think that God is asleep, God has forgotten us, but I, I guarantee you, God is 24-7, 366, and all the seconds that exist, God is busy working. He never takes a vacation on us, he never gives us a break, he's working for our good. And so I'm glad that the Lord has brought us here. Amen? Give a hand to God this morning. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, my friends. Welcome, welcome. I would like to acknowledge our guests, those who have uh, blessed us with their presence to worship with us uh, uh, for the first time or maybe after a very long time that uh, they visited. I would like to invite you to stand where you are so we can properly acknowledge you, all of our guests, if any. Amen? Please rise. I believe we have no guests in person today. And so I welcome our guests who are worshiping virtually with us today. I'm glad that you logged in to St. Mark's United Methodist Church here in Brooklyn. We welcome you and we pray that you'll stay connected with St. Mark's. This is a great church because we are founded under God. We are built up around God and the intentions of our hearts is to magnify the Lord every time we gather. Amen? So do log in always, and we will pray for you as we ask you to pray for us as well. Amen. Amen. Why don't we just rise, all of us, let us rise and welcome each other by greeting one another, a handshake, a wave, and just welcoming one another in the house of God. Oh, my God. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> 
a high five. This is the day, the day that the Lord has made. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And now as we are taking our seats, I'm going to invite, if there's anyone who uh, is celebrating a birthday or anniversary, if you are in person, please come to the altar. We would like to share in your celebration. All the birthdays, anniversaries, whatever you are celebrating, come, we want to uh, share with you. Um, it looks as though we have no birthday cakes today. And so we are going to offer our blessing anyways for those who are celebrating while they are worshiping virtually. Amen? Amen. Oh, the first lady is not going to be here next Sunday. It's going to be her weekend to work. And so she's going to get her blessing, her birthday blessing today. Turn to the congregation. We would like to, we would like to, <laughs> we would like to uh, celebrate with her in singing. Let's turn around. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Amen, 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 amen. Please help me bless her by raising your hands towards her. She's turning 16 years old on Saturday, this coming Saturday. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. Indeed, you are a good God. You always bless us. You always give us special gifts, like the gift of waking up in the morning and finding out, discovering that we are still alive. We can still breathe. We can still talk and hear when others talk to us and even be able to come to your house. We thank you for the gifts of life. And we thank you, our Lord, for this, your servant daughter, as she celebrates in anticipation her birthday. We pray that you will continue to align her path, continue to walk with her, continue, Lord, to lead her path and lead her way. Bless her and bless her family and bless all of us together, those who are worshiping online as they uh, celebrate their birthdays and anniversaries. We extend a hand of blessing towards them as well. Bless every family and bless everybody. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Oh my God, congratulations, happy birthday. Amen, amen. So we're going to now, uh, what is next? Yes, announcement. Um, St. Mark's extends a warm and cordial welcome to our guest. We invite you to fill out the attendance card and place it in the offering plate. We look forward to you returning to worship with us. If you do not have a church, we pray that you will consider our church, your homes, homes church. Our church, your home church. Bible studies on Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. And we all know the meeting ID and passcode. Our congregational meeting will be held next Sunday. And this is a continuation of last week. Was it last week? Yes. Right, last week. So maybe some questions were not answered and you might have more questions to be asked. So remember, come prepared to stay a little longer next Sunday for this congregational meeting, okay? We know we have a lot of questions. And I didn't see some people down there and they were in church last week. I am looking at them now. They were not in the congregational meeting. We want all members to attend. Please, we need your support. We need you. You know yourselves. I'm looking at you right now. 
Anyhow, church council meeting will be held on March 19th at 7.30 p.m. And church council meeting is for all the members of St. Mark's. So we have no excuse now. If you have what we call, what is it now? Remind me, I'm getting old. Zoom, if you have your, your phone, some phones have Zoom, you can get Zoom on it, and some people have the tablets. The Zoom ID, let me tell you, is 88, sorry, 822-4816-4458. And... The passcode is 846049. And those who don't have any of that, the phone number that you can call is 646-931-3860. For those who are here, and if you know others who are not here, and they are not coming to church, they do the Zooming thing. Please give them the information, please. We want them to be involved. We want them to know what is going on in the church. We, don't, we want everybody to know, please. So convey the, 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 the numbers, please. And Bible baptism and new membership will be done on March 24th. Anyone interested, please call the church office for information or see Sister Osna Simit. Contribution statements for 2024 are, are available. Please see the financial secretary, Sister Faye Rose, for your copy after service. And special funds, that's the second offering, was collected Last week, a thousand dollars, one thousand seven hundred and three dollars. Please remember to enter your name and or envelope number when you fill out the little white card. This, you have to put your 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 envelope number so that it can be recorded. And we, you have been doing very well. Isn't that lovely? Continue your good works. And I think next Sunday, the 10th also will be Encore Sunday. All right. So this is all the notices for today. You come in? Okay. Sorry. Sister Gentle's husband. We all hear that he died, right? The funeral will be on Saturday the ninth, Saturday coming. The viewing is at 4 p.m. and the service at 6. And another thing, coffee hour is in Adams Hall after church. Please don't run away. Please go down and fellowship after church. Okay, thank you. Good morning, church. Um, so I'm here to highlight uh, the one-day trip to Sight and Song Theater. Uh, the fly was in the bulletin for the past two weeks, but for some reason today the announcement is not there and neither the flyer. However, I just want to let you know of this one-day trip. We are going to Sight and Song to see Daniel. Now, those of you who have been to Sight and Song before, you know how exciting, how nice it is to go to that theater. It's not just the theater, though. We are doing lunch, we are doing shopping, and we have 
light breakfast on, on the bus, gratuity is included in your, your payment. Now the cost of this trip is $230 for adults and $195 for children. We have a payment plan of $115 starting today and the other $115 on April 7th. Now, at the congregational meeting last Sunday, one suggestion was that the church do more fundraisers in order to make the much needed funds that the church needs. This is an opportunity to help. You buy a ticket and you help. The profit goes to the church. Also want you to know that outreach committee is committed to transparency and accountability. All monies that we make goes towards the church. All profit, expenditure, income is recorded accurately and reported at the church council meeting. That is why it's important that everyone attend church council meeting so that they would know what is going on. It's not, it's not highlighted here on the pulpit. We don't talk about what we make on the pulpit. It is reported at the church council meeting. Every dime in the profit goes towards the church. Now this is your opportunity to help. Buy a ticket, invite a friend, bring one friend, and then we would be able to fill two buses. We have two buses. And if you bring a friend, we will be able to fill two profit. That's, that's more profit that the church badly needs. If you need a ticket, you can see Sister Yolan Haynes or Sister Hazel Felder or me. Please make an effort to support so that we could generate more income for this church. Thank you. I just have one announcement to make. In your, flat, in your bulletin this morning, there is a, an announcement in reference to St. Mark's United Women in Faith annual prayer breakfast. This is it. It was in your bulletin this morning. Uh, it's Faith, Food, and Fellowship, and this is on Saturday, March 16, at 9.30 a.m. here at St. Mark's. Tickets are $30. If you need tickets, please see the, our president, Sister Richards. If you know Sister Richards is over there, and myself. All are welcome, and we're expecting to see a, to have a full house on the 16. Amen. and offering time for praise and worship and in
When you think about serving God this morning, or any time, we are always supposed to be in line. Amen? Amen. Yes. And so, God woke us up this morning in our right minds. Amen? Amen. And he brought us here to praise him. And so let us praise God. Because he's a mighty God. And his name is supposed to be praised. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Remember the regular tithes and offering is the first, and then the second offering is special fund campaign. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there, that there may be meat in my house. house. And, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord, Lord of hosts, if, if I will not open you the windows you of heaven and, and pour you out a blessing, that, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Malachi 3 and verse 10. No matter. 
Lord, we thank you. We thank you for everything. If it was not for you, where would we find ourselves in such times as this? Nothing looks like it used to before. We thank you, Lord. You are kind, you are merciful, and you are always giving. Your generosity is beyond expectation. Bless now these offerings your children have brought forth to help build your kingdom here on earth, to make sure that the fire of the gospel stays on, even in the middle of the storm. Bless them, Lord. Provide according to each one's needs, whether physical, financial, mental, emotional, in whichever way. You are Jehovah Jireh, one who provides. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. King, all glorious King. 
Amen, amen, amen. Give them another clap of hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we never cease from admiring your greatness, the generosity of your heart. We have come to celebrate your kindness, your forgiving ability, the amount of love that nobody can comprehend. We have come from different places, different walks of life. We live in a distressed world, but we came because we trust that you will speak to us on this day. So let it be so, Lord. Speak to us on this day. Speak to your people, Lord. May you anoint my voice, my mind, my heart, my physical strength. Anoint me, Lord. Hide me behind your cross. If anything, simply use me for your glory. I pray that somebody today will be blessed. I pray that someone, even as though they listen on the internet or on the phone, that your anointing will reach out to them. Take over this moment. Take control, oh God. Let none of me be visible, heard, or dominant. But let all of you be the reality that we experience in this moment. For we ask, not on anybody else's name, but in the name of Jesus. Let somebody say, amen, amen. I am really excited today. I believe God has placed a word uh, in my mouth for us today. The word simply says, cleanse my heart, O oh Lord. As you can see, this type of message is not really like a sermon that goes out to the public. It is rather a personal prayer personal meditation. Amen? I want us to pause for a moment before we proceed. Just take a second for yourself. Amen? And I want to invite us to disconnect from every distraction. Disconnect from every distraction as we prepare for this moment. Amen? Amen. Just, just breathe. Amen? Breathe. Uh, let those who are assisting us do their work. And, and you focus on me and on the word. Amen? Don't help Brother Elron do what he's doing. Don't help him. He doesn't need your help. He's fixing the altar for us. Uh, just focus on me and on the word. Amen? Amen. Uh, clear your minds from any distractions from any negative thoughts, from anything else, just focus on the Lord. Because today it is a prayer, it's a personal prayer. It is not uh, uh, just a preaching of somebody, it's a personal prayer. When I was reviewing the scriptures, I came across uh, this scripture. I felt like this is a prayer, this is my prayer. I need to make this scripture my personal prayer. Cleanse my heart, O oh Lord. Uh, say to your own self, cleanse my heart, O oh Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Say those words again to yourself. Cleanse my heart, O oh Lord. Cleanse my heart, O oh Lord. You see, I, I look at, at this gospel, today's gospel, and it really did not sound like anything else to me. It sounded like a call for personal cleanness. Amen? Yes, we need personal cleansing from God. So this is it. This is it. If you have been looking uh, for cleansing, personal cleansing, you have come to the right church today. You have 
logged in to the right channel today and you have come to the right sanctuary uh, this morning uh, because today the Lord is calling each of us individually. Uh, that, that is a personal call. It's a personal call. It is also a collective call uh, for us as the body of Christ. We are being invited uh, 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 to, uh, to let God in uh, so that God can take care of our hearts. Amen? There are things we can take care of ourselves. Amen? Uh, we can go to work and get the job done and get that paycheck. Uh, but, but there are things when it comes to our hearts especially that really we need the help of the Lord uh, to cleanse our hearts. Amen? Uh, the heart is a place uh, in the Bible that is symbolically representing the entire person. You know. And so uh, 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 it's not just one, one piece of the body. It is a representation of all of us. Why would God want to cleanse my heart? Because my heart is filled with junkyard. <laughs> Amen? Uh, you, you rem remember that day when it's, the snowstorm comes down and, and the, the, the municipality truck uh, fails to come to collect the trash. <laughs> and the storm can last uh, for many days, or even weeks. And so the junk will just sit there. The trash bags are sitting there by our sidewalks for days and weeks. And the rats are feasting. They move from one trash can of one neighbor, and then they run to another. They have discovered the taste of what is in this neighbor's trash. And then they know what is in there. So they come here for they go there for the status. They go to the dish. I mean, they are just feasting in the, in the area. And this is New York City especially. Oh, we are blessed with a lot of rats. They come in different sizes. Some are like a little bit small and stylish. They are like models, you know. You see them walking like, woo, I'm going to take a selfie with this rat. Others are a little bit uh, different. and They come of all different styles. All different types of rats come meet them here in New York City. Don't go to the Caribbeans looking for rats. You're not going to find any. Everything is clean and neat. The trash is collected in time. Don't go to the Philippines looking for rats. You're not going to find any. Don't go to Mozambique looking for rats. Come to New York City. The rats will follow you on the train tracks. The rats are everywhere. Watch out in your apartment. They are all over. I'm not even going to talk about the roaches. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody say God is good. Because you wonder, how are we even living in this city? How, how are we still alive? <laughs> There's a lot of junkyard. Our air we breathe is poisoned. Factories and everything, smoke. If you, are, if you don't believe me, go home today. I know you are a clean person. You always make sure everything is clean. But go home today. Take a white paper towel. Wet it up a little bit. Just make it a little bit worked and start cleaning the windows. Not even, you don't even have to go outside of your house. From inside your house, just pass that paper towel in. You'll be surprised how that white paper towel is going to look like. And then you'll wonder, where does all this dirt come from? Our air is polluted. Our air is polluted, and that's the air we breathe. Lord, have mercy. If you want to know if God is real, look at us, the people of New York. If we are alive, in spite of all of these rats and all the bacteria and stuff, then you know that God is real in our lives. But today I'm not interested in that type of junk. Today it's a call for self-examination. It's a call for the kind of junk that stays in our hearts. 
That is the kind of junk that is responsible for killing beautiful relationships amongst people of God. That is the type of junk that is poisoning our lives, brings sadness to one's heart. That type of junk, you can't call 311 and have the municipality truck come to collect. That one that I talked about, you know, eventually they will take care of it. They will eventually take care of it. You just go on your day, go to work, come back home, you'll find that trash can still sitting there. And you'll be like, oh, they didn't come today too? Don't worry about it. Eventually the truck will show up. You'll come back home and you'll find no more trash there on your sidewalk. But I'm talking about the trash that sits in our hearts. Only God can take that one away from us. Only God's blood and his son Jesus Christ can take care of that type of dirt in our heart. You can't free your own self from that one. We need the help of the Lord. Yes, I have been at the seminary. Yes, I have been ordained. Yes, I am an elder of the church. But I cannot take care of that trash for my own self. I still need the Lord. Oh my God. I know you all, you are so happy and proud of me today uh, because I'm really looking like a good religious leader on my religious robes today. Mm, mm, mm. Pastor's looking good. Look at somebody and say, the pastor's looking good. <laughs> I am all perfect to your sight, to your eyes. Yeah, because I didn't miss anything. I have my, I have my robe. I have my stole. I, I, I am, I'm religiously perfect. On your eyes, I'm like an angel today. But I am ashamed to admit that you cannot take away the trash in my heart. I myself cannot do a thing about it. I may have all these robes to impress you, to make you look at me and think of me as a perfect servant of God. But I'm so sorry to let you know that there is junk in my heart that only God can take away. And you know how God does his things. And you know God's talk too. God is so brutal sometimes on his language. Because he says, Pastor Kisiko, you may look all impressive. You may be impressing your congregants. They may be thinking of you as a good religious leader who's perfectly dressed up, but there is junk in your heart. And I can see it. Because you know what God says? God says, I don't give a damn about your looks because it's not about your robes and your suits and your beautiful dresses and, and your uh, uh, first lady's hearts and all of that. It's none of that. God says render what? Render your hearts. You look at my choir, my choir is always beautiful and gorgeous and excellent. But you don't know what they are going through in their, in, their, in their lives. They are going through pain and suffering and all kinds of anxiety and stress. You look at all the worship leaders and all the uh, acolytes and all the, the musicians and all the... the, 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 the uh, uh, my ushers and all the security. You don't know what we are going through in the, in the heart. The thing is what? It's the heart. The heart. Oh my gosh. Who is going to clean and take care of the junk in our hearts? The answer is God. The answer is God. You can't impress God. And God doesn't care about anything else but our what? Our hearts. He is focused straight in our heart. He says, render your hearts, not your garments. Keep your garments to impress each other, to make your own selves look good. But I'm not on the garments. I am looking straight in your heart. 
They brought a woman that was caught up on prostitution. We are not told much about the men that she was prostituting with. That's where the unfairness of the story lies. They put so much emphasis on the woman as if that woman was prostituting her own self. It's impossible. She had a partner that did prostitution with, and that partner was a man. And so this bunch of men come to Jesus with this woman. They have a big news for Jesus. They're like, look at this woman. She has broke our law. According to our law, she needs to be stoned to death. They are not saying a single word about the man, and the man is not even there. They were focused on their laws, written laws. They did not know the heart of God who actually gave that law to Moses. The law did not belong to Moses. God gave the law to Moses, but they misinterpreted it. They used and manipulated the law to oppress a certain group of people amongst them and protect others. It is unfair. It is injustice. And Jesus, who knows the heart of the one who gave the law to Moses and the intentions for which God gave the law, Jesus said to them, you think that I am looking on the outside of you. You don't know where my eyes are. My eyes are on the heart of the accuser. And I see all the junk that is sitting there. How dare you bring this woman, humiliate her like this, as if you were perfect. So Jesus said, okay, I agree with you. We, today we're going to stone this woman to death. But this is how it's going to go. The one who has never done it, the one who knows that there's no junk hiding in your heart, let be the first to pick on the stone and stone this woman, and I will be last to do the same. What happened? One by one, they vanished. Because they were all in the discovery of self-junk. It was sitting in the heart. They discovered that Jesus, when he looks at you, he's not looking on the outside. He's looking <laughs> on the inside. It is the inside, the status of the inside of us that is going to land us either to heaven or to hell. Not the outside. Oh, my Lord. Now, I believe you'll agree with me that we all need this prayer to God. To ask God to do what? Not to send the New York City Municipality truck to take out that junk that is sitting on our sidewalk. We need God to send the garbage truck from heaven, straight from heaven, straight to our hearts, to do some cleaning in the heart. I need God to send the type of garbage collector to collect the garbage in my heart, to set me free, to set me free, so that my thoughts, my thoughts, let me settle there for a second. My thoughts. You know why? Because Jesus also said that sin is not limited to what you actually realize, materialize, and do physically. Sin begins where? Uh -uh, before even you go there. Who sends the suggestion of sin to your mind to process. Is your what? Is your eyes. What your eyes see. The eye is information collector. Amen? <laughs> the eye collects information. You look, and then you get attracted. And when you get attracted to something or somebody, you shouldn't. That information goes where? goes to your brain. That's your computer memory. Be processed. And so, and the heart also plays a role on that. Because the information that your eyes collect causes your heart 
to feel a certain way. Amen? But your mind, which exercises the conscience that God gave to all of us, is responsible for processing. Now, depending on who you are, the outcome may be different. Because if you are a good Christian who live by the word of God, even as you feel that attraction that was caught up on the eye, your mind and your heart will be remembered, will be reminded like Jesus' heart and mind was reminded on the desert when the devil was leading our Lord through different, different, so many temptations, many temptations. All of it, the devil covered the entire territory of the devil. Because he was interested in trapping Jesus. He knew that if Jesus went down, he would never manage to go to the cross and pay for our debt. But Jesus beat the devil on the basis of what? Of the scriptures. Of the scriptures. He defeated all the maneuvering of the devil based on the scriptures. So if you are a good Christian, even though your eyes can cause to be shaken, the word of God in you will help you, will redirect you to come to the right conclusion that no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But I'm telling you, you can't do it on your own. Every time you succeed to say no, you know that the Lord himself is your helper. Talk to yourself and say, the Lord is my helper. And I shall not be afraid of anything. Oh my God, those are the words. Those are the words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> I may go through the heights and the depths of it all, but the Lord is by my side. Now, as I close, because I'm about to bless you and prepare for communion, I'm coming down there to, to bless you. I'm going to close with this John 2 13 through 22. That's where I got my inspiration for today's message. You hear me, Sister Sherelle? Because I don't want you to be distracted and miss to capture the image. I would never have thought of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as an aggressive man. But I don't know, you, you help me because... What I find in that particular scripture, I don't see a sweet Jesus in there. This is a different type of Jesus. He just came from the wedding experience where he performed his first miracle. If you go a little bit backwards, instead of starting from verse 13, you go a little bit back, you'll see where, where was Jesus before this scene took place. He was coming from Canaan where he performed a miracle of blessing the water that was turned into wine and blessed the wedding. The wedding was about to be spoiled, was about to be ruined. You know, people, when they go to a party, <laughs> if there's no alcohol, they say there's no party. If you want people to be happy, feed their time with alcohol. Then they will be happy. It doesn't matter if after your party they are falling on the deadly accident or they are sending somebody to a major's room. It doesn't matter. Just make them happy. Give them that alcohol. Jesus figured it out. Because it was initiated by his mom. By it is hard to say no to our own mom. Even though he said to her mom, to his mom, it is not my hour, woman. What do you have to do with me? Leave me alone. I was invited to come here to this wedding. Not to perform miracles. But he then felt compassion for the people. Their party was about to be ruined because of alcohol. 
We, the Methodists, try to put some honey on that story. We say, no, you know, it was not the, the actual alcohol. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was some kind of uh, juice. Mm. It was grape juice. Hey, <laughs> it was wine. Wine is wine. Look at somebody and say, wine is wine. <laughs> now, everybody loved Jesus because he turned water into what? Into wine. Everybody now loves Jesus. He's famous. If you give people what people want, people will love you. But if you stand with what is right on the eyes of God, not in the eyes of people, people will hate you. Now Jesus is coming from making himself famous. He enters the temple and he finds that the people, the same people, that he made them drunk at the wedding. Now they are in the church, but they had turned the church, which is the house of God, which is the business of heaven, they turn it into their own business. They are taking care of their own business in the house of God. My God, they are doing inside the house of God what makes them happy, what is good for their sight, not what is good for God's sight. And they are all happy. There's so much noise in that church. Woo, I wouldn't want to be a pastor of that church. There was so much noise in that church. Look at somebody and say, too much noise in the church is not good. <laughs> we need peace in the church. That's what we need. We don't come to the church for too much noise, amen? There was so much noise in that church. It was a beautiful temple, a glorious temple. You have never seen a church like that one before. Not even here in New York City. That cathedral cannot be compared. But when the Son of God entered that church, his heart was broken. His mind was distressed. All his pride of being a child of God was destroyed. He felt like he was naked inside that church. Because as a child of God, who just made a miracle, made himself popular, and now... Everybody loved him in a wedding. Now he's in the house of his father. He is expecting to be happy, to be proud, to find joy and true worship and true worshipers who focus on God inside the house of God. But his heart was broken into pieces because he found out that the people who came to church, the people who were in church, they were about their own business, not the business of God. They were making money, selling, doing business exchanges about their own stuff inside the sanctuary. Jesus was broken to pieces. And this is where we see a new face of Jesus. Jesus becomes literally and physically aggressive. He starts whipping people like little babies, like moms do to their little kids. <laughs> get in there, behind you, get, get. Oh my God, this is a, these people, they're not kids, you know. These are people, families, they have children and grandchildren. They, they, these are grown men and grown women. But Jesus is going aggressive on them because they have moved from the way of God to their own way. I'm telling you, my friends. And, 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 and when, they, when they challenge him, they say, what kind of power and authority? Who do you think you are, in other words? Who do you think you are that you just walk in, come here in our church? We welcome, here to our, we welcome you here in our church. We open the door for you here. And now you are beginning to act like you are somebody. Who do you think you are? Where do you get such authority? Give us a sign. We need to see a proof that indeed 
The things you are doing here in our church come from God. Give us a sign. And Jesus even drives them more lost. Because he said, destroy this temple. This beautiful church that you are so proud of, destroy it. And guess what? I will rebuild it. In how many days? And they're like, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Our ancestors built this church in a period of time that lasted 46 years of building the church. And now you're standing here, you think, you're going to rebuild this church if we destroy it in just three days? You know what? Jesus was not talking about the, the building. Jesus was talking about himself. Jesus, remember this is Lenten season. Everything we hear in this season, it is a preparation, it's a reminder of the journey of Jesus. Jesus is headed somewhere. Where is Jesus headed? To the cross. Jesus is headed to the cross. He's telling them that destroy this church, talking about himself, his body. Destroy me, kill me, and in three days, I will be right back. And that's exactly what happened. I'm telling you, my friend, unless you walk on the ways of God, you will not understand the things of God. You will see things the human way, and you will be shocked. You will be scandalized. Don't be an angry mob in the church. Surrender your heart together with me to God to cleanse all the poison in your heart. Be free and open and let God have God's way in your life. When you do that, God will carry you on with grace, not with aggression, not with terror, not with physical violence. God is kind. God is merciful. God has a tender heart, and God knows how to care for our tender hearts. Amen? God is not going to kill you. God is not interested in punishing you. But you've got to give God your heart. That's my prayer. It's my personal prayer. Every day I pray that God will take my heart, clean, take away all the junk in there, so I can be a good pastor to the church of Jesus Christ. This is not my church. You are not my people. You are God's people. But God, for some reason, chose somebody like me to come here and speak for him and to act for him. I need more than you need. I need more cleansing. Amen? And so, my friend, let us stand up for prayer because our time has long run out. Let us stand for prayer. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do I have somebody who opened their heart for Jesus today? Do I have someone who agrees that I need Jesus to touch me, to make things different in my life? Do I have somebody else other than myself who feels the need for the grace of God to reach out, to touch, to touch our lives? I don't know what you have been through and I don't know what awaits you in this new week, but I'm telling you, we are about to pray to God who is seated on the throne of power, the mighty God, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for yourself, even as I pray for you. And please do me a favor. Pray for me and my family when you pray for yourself. Amen? Lord, we thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. You are truly a kind God. You are merciful. You are nice God. You are kind, God. You are a loving God. You are a forgiving God. And Lord, you know, we cannot live without your forgiveness. We cannot make it without your kindness. We can't survive without your goodness. Lord, we can't save ourselves. We are people of this world. Our minds are corrupted. Our hearts are corrupted every day. We have moved our attention from you to ourselves and to one another. We focus on the wrong thing. 
rather than focusing on you. And so we've come. We have come. And so we pray. And we are praying. And so we surrender. We are surrendering unto you, Lord. We confess our sins. And we ask your hand of grace, your hand of mercy and compassion to look favorably upon us, to touch and anoint us, refresh us, renew us, O oh God. Remold us, O oh Lord. Mold us afresh. Because you are the porter indeed. You are the porter. When a part of us break away, you have the ability to remold us and bring us together again. And now we pray in the name of Jesus, your Holy Son, Jesus. Lord, don't you even remember my own name? Because it's mixed up with so much mess. But I'm praying in the name of your Holy Son, who is Jesus the Christ. Remember your Son, Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for an overflowing of blessings upon your people. Do not block your blessings for your people, Lord, because of my own junkyardness. I pray that you will bless your people on this day, right now. Somebody, somebody's desperate for their health right now. Somebody's dealing with depression and oppression right now. Someone, Lord, is afraid for what awaits them on this week, tomorrow, and the days ahead. I pray in the name of Jesus, on behalf of each and every one of these, your holy children, that Lord, you gave your life for them, so that while we are all sinners, we may be holy because of the sacrifice of your holy son. Let nothing block your blessings to any single one of them, because your son has given away his life on the cross, not just for some blessed and privileged ones, but for all and for all of your children. They dare to come to your house because they have needs in their souls. Lord, bless them. Take care of your people, each one according to their need, each one according to the measure of their faith, as your word says. In the name of God, who is Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Let us sing together the hymn of preparation for communion. If you feel tired, if you feel tired, it's okay to sit down. Any time.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. All of us together. broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body, which is given for you. <coughs> Do this as often as you, as you drink it, as you eat it, in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. And so, in the remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving is a holy and a living sacrifice in the union of Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Throughout your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts, and on these gifts of bread and wine, 
make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the blood of Christ redeemed by his blood by your spirit make us one with Christ one with each other and one in the ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Beloved, as you come to receive the bread and to receive your portion of the symbolic blood of Jesus, come with confidence, do not be afraid. Come in faith and trust that the Lord is truly taking care of all the junk in your heart. Because there is nothing else that can take away our sins but the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Come as directed by the ashes.
body of Christ which has been given to you. Take the body of Christ and eat. And the blood of Christ which has been given to you, take the blood of Christ and drink it. And keep it in your heart, the truth that truly your sins have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Go out there to the world with confidence, with joy, and no hesitation, knowing that you are a free child of God. Amen? You may rise and go in peace, and the Lord be with you. Blood of Christ, which has been given to you, take and eat. And the blood of Christ, which has been given to you, take and drink it. And know it in your heart that you are a saved child of God. You have been saved. You have been saved. God has done everything He needed to grant us salvation. So go out there to the world and look proud and joyful and happy, knowing that you are a child of God. Amen? And walk with style. You hear me, my friend Mary Lou? Walk with style, because you are a child of God. Go, and the Lord be with you. Blood of Christ, which has been given to you, take and eat. And take the blood of Christ and drink it. And know it in your heart that you are a precious child of God. You are a precious child of God. So rise and go in peace, and the Lord be with you.
bride of Christ, which has been given to you, take and eat. And take the blood of Christ and drink it. And be assured in your heart as you drink the blood of Christ that there is really nothing else that is left. Our sins are 100% cleared up. We are like angels now. So forget anything of the past and focus on the Lord as a saved child of God. And go out there and tell everybody about Jesus. Amen? Amen. You may rise and go in peace and the Lord be with you.
God is good. And all the time. Let me ask, did the tech team receive communion? Okay, okay. Somebody's car is blocking somebody. Two cars. Okay. God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. I feel so spiritually renewed this morning. Do you feel blessed this morning? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. God is with us. God is with us. And so you have feasted on the table of the Lord. Now go out there to the world. Every time you walk out of your door, you are really setting foot to the unknown. Because you don't know what awaits you out there. You may just be thinking, oh, I am going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do some groceries. But you don't know what to expect. And so the Lord be with you on your going out and on your coming in. Remember that scripture? Yes, in your coming in and your going out, the Lord be with you. Because you never know. You never know. When, even when you come back home, oh, I'm safe now, I'm home. Uh, you may not see tomorrow, but you were there peacefully. Nobody attacked you. Uh, uh, so we need God all the way, all the way. I want to encourage you not to live your life based on fear of what is happening around. You just give your life to God and let God take care of you. Just do whatever you got to do, unafraid. Amen? Amen. And so now uh, I, I got to remind you of something important. Uh, this coming Sunday, after the service, we will gather again downstairs as a church family to deal with our internal affair uh, uh, matters of the church life. It's extremely important uh, that you make sure to be there. If you are listening from, uh, uh, from the internet or on the phone, I'm asking you to make an effort to come in person this coming Sunday. We gotta complete the business that we started uh, last Sunday. We learn a lot about our church about our denomination, about the ways we operate, and we help clarify any lingering questions in our minds so that we can move forward together as a strong family and take care of what we need to take care of in our church. Amen? Amen. And the second thing that I wanted to remind us of is that um, I am planning to have the baptisms and the membership on the Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday. And so uh, if you are waiting to be baptized or to be formally received as a member, as an official member of this congregation, I want you to give a call to the office tomorrow after 10 a.m. Uh, so that your name will be taken down. Very soon, I will be meeting with uh, uh, all of those who want to be baptized uh, to do a class that I will help answer questions and clarify and give inf relevant information. So you may have been worshiping here for a while, but if you were never formally introduced to the congregation, by standing here in front of the pastor and the pastor go through a short ritual, and then you are not yet officially a member. And so I'm talking about you. So give a call to the office and let them know that you are interested in becoming a member, a formal member of this congregation. And then uh, you, will, you will have a meeting with me at some point uh, to uh, help answer any questions that you might have about your new church family. Amen? And then your name will be on the books of St. Mark's and you will be 
officially part of the family. I am so blessed to be the pastor of your church. It is such an honor. I am humbled every day. I pinch myself, I say, wait a minute, am I alive? Is this a dream? Am I the pastor of these wonderful people? I am so blessed. I love you and the Lord I will continue to care for all of us. And I love you with the love of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let us now stand for the recessional.
Amen. Amen. And remember, after the benediction, we are going downstairs for the coffee hour. Let us receive the benediction. Please open your hands to receive what God has for you. May the love of God Almighty, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be given unto you on this day and all the days that follow until we meet again in Jesus' name. And the Lord be with you. And also, um, where are we going this Wednesday for the Lenten service? We are going to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. And the Lenten service there will start promptly at 7 p.m. And so I will hope to see you there. Thank you. Enjoy and have a blessed week. <laughs>